Hey everybody, Pastor Mike Burns here from Tulsa, Oklahoma, a suburb of Tulsa called Broken Arrow, and I'm very excited to be with you here today. I know that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody today? Praise God. Today is Friday. It is March the 4th, 2022, and it is time for not just God's healing word, but on Fridays we teach on financial stewardship. And so we've been studying a lot about uh, financial principles that are contained in the Bible. You know, I made this statement before, but do you know that there's actually more in the Bible about finances, which involves, you know, real estate, livestock, gold and silver and precious stones and, you know, all, all these different things, silver and other things. There's more in there about that in the Bible than there is even about heaven. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean that they're more important than going to heaven. Of course, that's the most important thing, having a relationship with God through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to be very clear about that. But the Bible is not silent on the area of our finances and financial stewardship. As a result of that, you know, I heard someone say one time that where the Bible is silent, we should be silent. And where the Bible speaks, we should speak about what the Bible says. And that's what we're doing here on Fridays on Stewardship Fridays. Again, on as we close the week out, let me encourage you to visit our website, mjbministries.org there you can sign up for our free e-newsletter which you'll see in a pop-up window uh, be sure and sign up for that we just sent out march 1st the newsletter for march and we'll send it to everybody who signs up for it today we have about 578 580 people that have signed up for the newsletter and we love to include you in that process this month of march we dealing with the subject of redemption and what does it mean? Why does God require blood to redeem us? So we deal with uh, Christianity, a uh, faith in God that's been born in blood and why the blood is so important. And so uh, we're going to be talking a lot about that. Many other articles that we have in this month's newsletter. And I'm sure you'll want to sign up for it. Don't forget we have links to our YouTube channel on our website where we have over 100 free videos for your enjoyment, including this one we're making right now, live, will be on after the broadcast. And then, of course, we have free audios on our website. And then we have our archives of our newsletter that you can review. And we also have links to our mobile app. We have an app. Did you know that? MJP Ministries has a mobile app available in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And we have it there for you. You know, all these things that we have cost us money. The newsletter costs us every, money every month and time. A lot of effort goes into that. Uh, to have this broadcast, have the camera, the lights, all that we have here costs us money. The, uh, the services that we pay for with internet, with Vimeo, with all these different ones, we pay a monthly fee for all of these things. And of course, publishing our books that we have made available to you costs money. And so, you know, we are very happy to make them available to you. But that's why this year of 2022, my wife and I not only believe in God for great speaking opportunities, but we're looking for at least 50, 50 new partners who will pray for us on a daily basis, as well as give a monthly gift financially to help support us, which is why we're asking for today, specifically on Financial Friday, Stewardship Friday, where we teach on finances. So thank you for perfectly considering that. If you're getting any benefit from this, you know, we're not just starting this thing. We've been doing this for more than five and a half years, broadcasting when we were pastoring in New York, when we were, uh, we pastored there for 35 years. We do all of our services online back then, before COVID, before any of the issues that people are having today. And then, of course, we left that work in 2000. 2018 and have been continuing to broadcast every day God's healing word and uh, so we appreciate those of you that have given uh, in the past and you could certainly give just a one-time gift 
or you can become our partner. You can do all of that by visiting mjbministries.org and then click on the giving uh, word there where it says giving, or you could text MJBMIN uh, to 45777. That's MJBMIN to 45777. If you text that, you'll be taken to their giving page where you could either give a one-time gift or you can sign up to become our partner. Also, uh, we have Cash App giving. If you don't want to really just give a one-time gift, go to dollar sign MJB Ministries and make your gift that way. Praise God. We appreciate all of you thinking, not thinking that we're in this for the money, but it just takes money to do uh, what we're doing here. You know, when I was a pastor, I ministered every week, and after, even after I had the strokes, and many of you know I had seven strokes over five years ago, this June will be the sixth year that I've been stroke-free, praise God. I had seven of them in three parts of my brain. And uh, when I was a pastor, we had services during the week. We had midweek service Sunday morning. Once a month, we had Sunday night. Uh, we had, you know, uh, daily v uh, online services that we did and things. And we had a lot of income that came into us. But, you know, when my wife and I left our work back in Long Island, we only had a couple of people that really supported us on a regular basis. And we really need some new friends and new partners here. And so that's why I'm asking for it on today, which is Stewardship Friday, where we're dealing with finances. So please prayerfully consider that and act on what uh, what, your, uh, what the Lord tells you to do, to do. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer today. Father, on this Stewardship Friday, I ask today that you would think through my mind and speak through my lips, causing the ears of the people to listen the minds to be opened, and the hearts to be receptive. I'm asking today, Father God, that you'll give us wisdom from your word that we will rightly divide it on behalf of the people that are tuning in today. I'm asking, Father God, in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will confirm this word in the lives of all of your people. Hallelujah to Jesus. I thank you, Father God, for financial miracles being done for people, people that are in need, people that have bills they're facing that every need we call it met and supernaturally supplied we believe that angels ministering spirits have gone north south east and west and are causing finances to come into our hands glory to god for satan himself the devil must take his hands off of all of our monies in jesus name monies that are owed to us monies that are, are gifts and surprises that we wouldn't expect in the natural but, Father, we also believe we have favor in our lives, financial favor. That, Lord, you're giving us bonuses and raises and job promotions, Father God, and open doors of opportunity, Father, that we can never open in ourselves. We thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness to us, Father. And we believe it, we receive it in Jesus' name today. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Now, today we're going to begin to talk again, as we did last week, from Luke. Uh, let me see, Luke, the 17th chapter. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke 17. Amen. Sorry about that. Uh, trying to get things set up properly here. But Luke 17, we begin to talk about what the disciples said last week on Friday. We talked about financial stewardship principles. And we talked about the principle of faith and how the disciples asked the Lord in verse number 5 of Luke 17, Lord, increase our faith. And we saw that there were two examples the Lord Jesus gave about having faith. He said, if you had faith as a mustard seed, in other words, talking about the nature of the mustard seed that can grow. If you have a faith that comes from God, that is a faith that will grow. The way you grow it is by using it. That's why he said, if you said to the sycamine tree, be plucked up from the roots and be cast into the sea, it will obey you. And then he talked about faith is like a servant. When it comes in from working all day on your behalf, you don't say, okay, sit down, eat, rest, and take a break. No, you say, serve me even more now. In other words, demanding more of your faith will cause it to grow and to increase. And we liken it into our physical muscles that we have in our body. How that if we want our muscles to develop, we have to exercise them. You know, there's a term, maybe you've heard this term, it's the term atrophy. 
muscles can actually atrophy. And unfortunately, we've seen people who have been injured and, uh, you know, have been paralyzed and they no longer use their arm or their leg or whatever. And as a result, their muscles atrophy, they, they shrink and people are unable to make use of those things. Well, your faith has the potential to become atrophied in the same way through lack of use if you don't exercise and utilize your faith. You know, years ago I did a teaching from a series on healing I did, and one of the messages was probably one of my favorite titles I ever came up with. And, you know, preachers were always looking for good titles for messages, but this one message I had, I called, I called it Don't Just Stand There, Rebuke It. And I love the idea of don't just be like people who stand there and stare at their problems. Don't just stare at your circumstances. Don't just stare at your needs hoping that one day it will change for your good. No, you have to exercise your faith. You've got to rebuke the enemy, which means to judge him from a higher position of authority that you have in Christ and tell him to get his hands off of your situation. Well, you see, this is what I'm talking about right now, about if you want to see an increase in your faith, you have to use it. Now, I, last week I talked to you about uh, one of my mentors, many of you also have him as your mentor, Reverend Kenneth E. Hagan, who's in heaven right now. But when he was alive, he was raised up off of a, of a deathbed at the, at the age of 16 of an incurable blood disease, a deformed heart and paralysis that was from his chest on down. He got a hold of Mark 11, 23 and 24 and came up off of that bed healed by the power of God. Now, let me say something to you. As he went on in the younger years of his life, he ended up getting married. He struggled financially. Now, when it came to healing, it was easy because he had learned to develop his muscles of faith for the area of physical healing. But he had not yet developed his faith muscles for the area of finances and prosperity. Obviously, that changed greatly over the course of his life. The man became very prosperous. I remember him even saying one day at Winter Bible Seminar with that, about 7,000 people there, he said that my wife and I, if we were to retire from ministry right now, we'd have an average income annually tax-free of a quarter of a million dollars that would come in based on the investments that we've made over time. I thought to myself, that's a wise man right there. He could retire. He wasn't retiring. He ministered until he actually fell dead one day. Uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is he had at the end, he could have retired and lived off of his investments of $250,000 a year tax-free. Think about that. Now, that would be in a year before 2003. So we're talking, you know, many, many years ago, 19 years ago, that uh, he would, he would probably 20, 21 years ago, he would have said this. So think about that today. Even today, I like to live tax-free on $250,000 a year. And I'm sure most of you would uh, today as well. But you see, Brother Hagen had to learn to develop his muscles for finances. And so this is exactly what uh, Jesus is telling us that we want to see our faith increase. You do not, and I said this and I'll say it again, that you do not increase your faith by asking God to increase it. You increase your faith by putting it to work for you by demanding more from it. Now, I'm going to tell you, many people have a faith for going to heaven, and we're very thankful that we are going to heaven based on what Jesus has done, dying for our sins, spilling his blood, rising from the dead, and when you and I calling him Lord, believing in our hearts that God raised from the dead, and we have received eternal life or salvation. But let me tell you something, not only should you have faith for eternal life and salvation and forgiveness of your sins, but you need to have faith for healing, which is why we teach Monday through Thursday on God's healing word. But on Fridays, you also have to have faith for finances. God wants you to use your faith. You know, God doesn't just rain down blessings upon us. They don't fall on us, like Brother Hagin used to say, like ripe cherries off of a tree. You know, they just don't fall. You have to do something in harvesting them. You know, uh, plant the seed. Watch it grow. Water it. Uh, you know, get the weeds out if you can, and then reap the harvest. Let me tell you something. There's the idea of reaping. Most people don't understand, like the birds of the air, Jesus said, they don't sow, nor do they reap or gather into barns. You know who does that? You and I do that. We, we plant, we sow, we reap. We have to do the reaping, 
and we have to gather it into our barns or our accounts, our portfolio, if you will, whatever that might be. And so you and I have been given a privilege of planting or sowing, reaping the harvest, and increasing our portfolio. That's basically what Jesus was teaching in Matthew, the sixth chapter. Now, let me say to you that you will develop your faith for finances as you practice and do what the Word of God says. That's why it says in James 1.22, but be doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You know, many people don't understand it. They say, well, I don't understand why things aren't working for me. Well, you're, many of those people, I would say, are self-deceived because they're hearing what the Word has said, but they're not practicing it or doing what the Word of God says. See, trusting God, we already made this statement, is essential when it comes to the Christian life. But trusting God with your finances is the starting point. Because where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Jesus said that in Matthew 6, 21. And so think about that. Where your treasure is, trusting God, putting a portion of what he blesses you with into his work, into his kingdom, in, through your tithes and through your offerings, into your local church, and into ministries like this one here that's feeding you the word of God. You see, this is what it means, being a doer of the word. It, it also involves forgiving those who wrong you, walking in love towards your enemies, absolutely speaking words that are right and not having corrupt speech. All of these things are important. Tithing, giving offerings, it's all part of this in the area of financial stewardship principles. So we have to learn to be a doer of these things and not just to hear, otherwise we'll be self-deceived. Now, I, I said this before, but I'll say it again, that there's three kinds of deception. There's deception that comes by the devil, deception that comes from other people, and there's deception that comes, uh, that's self-deception. Now, the worst kind of deception is not that which comes from the devil, not even that which comes from other people who take advantage of us, but it's when we become self-deceived and we don't realize that we're deceiving ourselves, but the key is found in James 1.22 as being a doer, acting on the word of God, and not being a hearer of the word only, because if that's the case, then you would be, as James said, a self-deceived person. Now, in James chapter 2 and verse number 20, this is what James also went on to say later. He said, but will you not know, vain man, that faith without works is dead. See, many people will say, well, I believe God can supply all my need. I believe God can, you know, cause finances to come into my life. I believe that God can do this, that, or the other thing. And while that may be a true statement, and I would not discourage you from saying that, but faith without works is dead. In other words, you've got to put some action to your faith. If you want finances to increase in your life, then you need to put action to it. I have a family member that is in the, in the real estate business who I heard recently, uh, he started his, his, not his own agency, but has his own business and is doing, I can't even tell you, tens of millions of dollars a year. Now, he works very hard at what he does, praise God. But I want to say something to you. He's obviously living by the principle that faith coupled with works will bring increase in prosperity and life, but faith without works is dead. Now, there are many Christians today, unfortunately, uh, that offer to God what I term as lip service. But listen to this. Not only faith without works is dead, but I like to say it like this, <clears throat> but words without works will produce very little. Now, I'm going to say that again because I think I said it last week, I'm going to say it again. Words without works will produce very little. So as, you tr as your trust in God begins to grow by demanding more from your faith, listen, you'll begin to see more and more victories. Are you listening to me? Each time you see a victory, your confidence in God will grow more and more. And as will your response to his word and promptings by the Holy Spirit within your own human spirit. Now, let me give you just one example before we close here today. Let's say you were introduced to an investment 
uh, opportunity that offered three levels of investment. You can invest $10, you can invest $100, or you can invest $1,000. The promised return in this investment is uh, 100 times your investment. Now, some of you might say, well, that's just too good to be true. Well, in some ca most cases, it probably is too good to be true, but we're using this as an illustration. So it, uh, it sounds, as I said, too good to be true, and you're a bit hesitant to go forward with this investment, even though you've heard of others who have taken the leap and have gotten proven returns on their investment. Which investment level would you most likely go toward uh, with, would it be the 10, 100, or the 1,000? Well, I would dare say that most of us would start with as little risk as possible and start at the $10 level. Then within a month or so, they see $1,000 return to them. Do you think